You know, if you think about Oracle over the past, you know, few years, they've had a heavy push into the cloud. They've actually backtracked off of that and have announced the new version. Actually, they've announced it probably about two years ago. Um, and so I want to go over the details of 11.2. So what's supported, what features are being deprecated, what's coming out in the future. So from a support perspective, they're actually taking the 11.2 instance and moving it to Applications Unlimited. That's going to get you premier support through 2030 at a minimum. It may get extended. Um, but they made a commitment to those customers, right? They don't want to force you to go to the cloud, right? That's a decision that needs to be done internally using lots of different decisions. But so from 11.124 perspective, that was just due to go end of life in, in 2020. They've extended that an extra year. So that goes to 2021 right now. From an innovation perspective, one of the cool things about this is it's the last upgrade you'll have to do. So it's going to be a, a one major out of place upgrade and they're going to do continuous patch set updates for new features, bug fixes and defects and things like that. Um, it, they, they are giving an option if you don't want to host it in house and you wanted a, a, a private cloud, you can use the cloud infrastructure to take the 1112 on a hosted cloud infrastructure to get a private cloud for you guys. Um, but and this is a big one here. Enhancements are driven by the customer needs. So if there's things that you want to see or things that you want the product to do or things that are new features, you have to put those enhancements requests out there so that it gets flagged. If we get enough people to sit to request something, they'll they'll build it into the product. And they've got you know ongoing investments, but we're doing smaller releases. So instead of doing every two or three or four years a major upgrade which takes months of time and new hardware and new infrastructure, it's smaller patch set updates. Um, you know, some of the be benefits are it's not a forced migration. It is actually an out of place installation. Or so what you have to do is essentially stand up the software and migrate the objects over. There are some things that are going away. One of the major things is EPMA is now being deprecated. So foundation services is going through a huge repository simplification. And so if you're an EPMA application, you've got to rebuild it as a classic app and redo all your metadata integrations. Okay. So continuing on, so this just talks about the support. So 124 goes through 2021, 11.2. It's scheduled for calendar year 2019. I've heard as early as October. I would expect it sometime in the Q4 timeframe. Um, they're doing a repository simplification. And as part of that, they're also providing a, a content migration utility. So it allows you to take all of your FR reports from your existing applications and bring them into, into the new environments. Um, and then, of course, they're providing defects and third-party certifications through 2030. Um, so going on, so some of the details, so the repository, so they're going from, if you look at foundation services, that's being deprecated. They're going to more an RDBMS structure with a content migration utility to help move things across. It's supported on, uh, the original release is only Windows. So 2012 and 2016, a future patch set update will support it on Linux. Exolytics is now being deprecated, so it's no longer supported. They'll still run on Exolytics, but if there's an issue related to it, they're not going to support it. Okay. So database-wise, it's Oracle 12.2, SQL Server 2019. They've added support for Chrome and Firefox as well. Um, I know it's always worked, but now it's fully supported. <clears throat> and it is an out-of-place upgrade. Right, so you install the software on the new environment, and then you have to migrate the op applications over, essentially. So create the shell, bring over the hierarchies, bring over the data, bring over all the objects, the forms, the calcs, the reports, the tasks, things like that, to stand it up. And then they're going to be doing enhancements through a series of patch set updates. And I don't know if that's, they haven't defined the timing, if that's a quarterly update, or if it's twice a year or once a year, but those will be coming out on regular. So they're smaller updates. So it's not something that would take months and months to apply the patch set. It's probably a couple of weeks to, to look and see the impacts and apply those patch set updates. Um, one of the cool things is it is the exact same code set as 11.124. So the underlying applications are gonna be almost identical with the exception of some of the new features that are coming out. Um, so from a new feature perspective, if you're running HFM, they're turning on what they call automated consolidations. And so what that means is if you have, you know, when you're loading data into the application, you know, typically you'll load, you know, you've got many ERP systems around the world and they're pulling in all this data, 
and you have a scheduled consolidation run. So say noon, five o'clock, that scheduled runs the data through. Going forward, what happens is once you load the data in, it's always consolidating that data. So the consolidation starts in the back end and starts processing that. So by the time you get to your scheduled run, it's probably done a good portion of it just to help to increase the, the or decrease the time for the consolidation runs. Um, you know, since EPMA is going away, they're providing the a metadata editor through SmartView, just like they did in planning. They have that SmartView metadata editor. They're bringing it into HFM as well. They're allowing purging of some of the tables. They're doing some performance improvements to help the consolidation times. And then of course the Linux support. From the planning side, they're bringing in smart pushes. If you guys are familiar with the cloud, the smart push is you attach it to a form. So as you're entering data, calculating that data, the push will pick it up in the back end. It's almost like a partition. Pick it up and push it to a reporting cube and aggregate it there. So it's just something that instead of doing a scheduled export, import, or, or an integration to a reporting cube, it's gonna push it across. They've got the dimension editor. They're doing valid intersections as well. Um, from a DRM perspective, there's a lot of changes on DRG. So mass approvals is something that someone's, they've been asking for for a long time. Um, of course, some batch scripting as well. So what's discontinued, again, the big thing is EPMA. That's going away. They are providing a limited use DRM license for it to, to manage the metadata for the applications. Um, from HFM perspective, the SBase Analytic link, if you guys remember that, that was the connection that took it from a relational structure and put it into an SBase queue for reporting purposes. And then the, the analytics, which I don't think many people really used anyways. Uh, on the planning side, all the pre-built are gone, right? So workforce, CapEx, project financial planning, those are all being deprecated. If you have them today, you can stand up an application, create a custom plan type and migrate those across, but they're not gonna be supported. So if there's something happens, you're gonna have to you know, figure it out. And then crystal ball is gone, the strategic finance is gone. And if you want strategic finance or you're using it, it's a pre-built module in the cloud. So if you're using it, I would say that EPVCS module probably works a little bit better. From a some of the other things, disclosure management, which nobody really used that anyways, but EPMA mobile's gone, EPMA is gone. The, the ODI adapters are no longer being supported. So the adapters that connected ODI, your so e EBS to your Hyperion applications, those are no longer supported as well. You know what? It's going to end up being like a probably a flat file integration. Now you can st you can still use it, but it's not supported going forward, right? So it's exporting the data out or sticking into a, a, a relational table, writing the query to pull it across. If you don't to avoid the the, the tables there, um, and then all the legacy Brio tools are gone. So IR is gone, web analysis, those are all, all gone as well. From a DRM perspective, here's some of the things that DRM does. It is limited use, and I'll talk about what's limited here. But again, you manage your dimensions, you manage your hierarchies, it gives you versioning capabilities so that you can essentially snapshot your hierarchies month over month, quarter over quarter for SOX compliance. Um, it gives you value inheritance, so just like EPMA, you, you identify the, the, the property at the top and it inherits it down. It supports that as well. The versioning lets you take snapshots of your hierarchies. You can roll those back, so if you, if you load your hierarchies and you realize, okay, my, my numbers are off, you can roll that back to any point in time and then re-import it and kind of help do comparisons. But um, derived properties, that's, that's the big thing, is I can set up derived properties and validation. So if I add a new account and it's an asset account, if it doesn't start with a one, it won't export. So you put in the business logic that you need to support your applications, um, you know, and it helps derive all that. Then we've got the validations, exports, and then comparisons that you can do. Um, from a limited use perspective, the big thing is the governance is not, is not part of that, right? So if you wanted to set up a workflow that allows people to request new metadata or new accounts or new cost setters or companies, that's got it, that's an extra license for that. Um, and then, you know, the from an export perspective, it's only supported in the Hyperion environment. So planning, S base, um, HFM is it. If you want to feed it to EBS, that's not part of that limited use there or a relational database or something. Thanks, guys.